prospering in hard times, the source and his channels. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Well, the reason that I'm laughing is I just finished recording an excellent version <laughs> of this message, and I didn't push the record button. <laughs> and it was already the third run because I had some technical difficulties that I'd never had before. So my message is becoming, becoming a lot more chatty than it was in the past. And so um, <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, my name is Al Persson. You can contact me at pastor at mascot.church or in the comments below. If you like this message, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, every time I do these, they become a little more chatty and a little more folksy. So we're going to start it this way. I'm going to flip it on its head. God is our source, and he blesses us by opening channels. God is our source, and he blesses us from opening, by opening channels channels. What do I mean about that? Well, let me pop you up to these two words here on the screen. The words are source and channels. Al, you better help me. What are we talking about? Everything comes from him. Every breath that you breathe, every step that you take, everything comes from the goodness of God, it comes because he blesses you he is the one who does that. Your job is a channel. Now, God is not in the created order. All worship, all honor, all glory goes to him because he is God. He's not in the created order. He is the source. The source of all things is where he is, is from himself. Okay, only he is not created. Everything else is created. Heaven is created. The angels are created and everything. But the, the uh, uh, God in three persons is eternal, is not created. So that's why we only bring worship to the Father, the, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. It is the Lord, it is God, who is our source. Well, how does he bring blessing? What does he do? How does he bring these things to, to pass? How does he bring stuff to me? How does he bring food to me? What does he do? God opens channels. From the very beginning of history, as God laid it down, as God revealed it to his people, even when there was no sin or no, no failure or no flaw in the relationship between God and his people, God still provided work, W-O-R-K. He still provided a channel for Adam to live in or to live with. He said, you need to tend this garden. Now, the garden is a type of the temple, but nevertheless, it was, it was Adam's work to do. So even in a perfect world, you will never be without work. Even in heaven, once you die, you will have work to do. Thank goodness you'll have something to keep you occupied. Uh, that's why I suggest getting used to it now, <laughs> all right? Now, uh, after man fell, of course, work became much more difficult. And you can read that and find out. Then you, as you read on in scripture, you find out that um, uh, Adam had sons and, and, and um, uh, one son kept animals, another one kept um, the grain in the field and so on. And you, you find often the people, are, uh, people are introduced even in scripture according to what they do. You see that kind of channel that God has given them in their lives. The blessings that you have today, the physical things that you have today, the things, the roof over your head, the money that comes in, comes in because God has opened channels for you. Now, I don't want to turn our relationship with God into a formula that would be wrong, but we're, in, we're heading into very, very difficult times. Uh, the great Western Empire is on the verge of collapse. The great Western Empire, America, Britain, NATO, those NATO countries and so on. We're at the very end. We have probably another 25 or 30 years to go. I've just acquired Unwin's book, uh, Sex and Culture, and uh, wherein he looks at civilizations um, a a a that end and what causes them to end. And a lot of that has to do with their attitude towards sexuality. And um, he marks the number of years, and we basically are two-thirds along the way. So we're ready to collapse, which is really, really interesting. Well, what's that mean for us? Well, it means hard times are coming. You think it's tough now? Hmm. Well, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle this? What, what, what's, what, what's the solution? Just curl up in a corner and cry? No. God has not changed, and he will continue to open channels. It is important for you to, you and I, first of all, to always honor him first. 
And that's the foundation for him opening channels for you constantly to put him first and his will first. You know this passage. I'm going to put it up here. There is part of a much larger discourse, the Sermon on the Mount. But look at Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 34. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I like that. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What a great way the Lord said that. So from the very beginning, you have this constant sense of God being the source and providing channels. What does that mean on a day-to-day level for you, for me, for whatever? Number one, your first priority and absolute prosperity has to do with knowing God. In Jesus' high priestly prayer, he said, I pray that they, may, that they may have eternal life, and to know you is to have eternal life. Not quite the perfect quote, but I think you know where I'm going with this. The first thing to do is to walk with him and talk with him. Make him your number one priority. The first thing off the day is to get right with God. You might use the phrase, keep close accounts, stay in his word. I, I don't really care what phrase you use or what, how you describe that, but I think you know what I'm talking about. What do I do from there? Well, I believe God. I trust him to open channels. And those channels can vary. There could be a lot of variation. They're, I'm self-employed. So the, just in case you wonder, the church does not pay my bills. It assists a little bit, but really does not, uh, does not pay my bills. Uh, God pays my bills. I have a business. And so uh, I, work comes in through that business. Now, over the last couple of years, that business has fallen on challenging times. So what did I do? Well, God is my source. I constantly, constantly discipline myself to look at him as my source and the business as a channel. I realized also that God would open up new business channels, maybe channels through the new business or channels off the side. So I continued to keep my eyes open and my ears open for those things to happen. Would I take some job away from my business? Absolutely. If God opened that channel and said, here, this is the kind of work, but you've never done that before. It'll pay the bills. The likelihood that I would do that is very high because why? God opens channels. This should say something to the rest of us. Maybe you're already well-employed and, 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 and everything is fine. And you say, well, I'm okay. I want to ask you to test your heart. If you say that, let's say you've got a, a good paying job and money in the bank and so on. Test your heart for a minute. What do you see as your source? Do you see that job as your source? Do you see that savings account as your source? Or God as your source? This is a very big and interesting, challenging time, isn't it? You can be very challenged. At the time, really, prosperity is more, uh, times of prosperity are, are at least as challenging, maybe more so than times of, uh, of scarcity. Times of scarcity, you might be quick to fall on your knees and pray and cry out to God. But times of prosperity, that's a little different. It is very challenging. It's constant, a constant challenge to our spiritual walk to stop seeing the, ne- or to not to see the things that are part of the creative created order as our source, to only see God as our source, and to see those things in creation as simply channels that God opens up. Is that clear? Am I making myself clear here? I'm kind of seeing the audience say, yeah, I sort of get that. I sort of get that. (laughs) I I don't have a physical audience here. I just have this one little camera that I'm looking at, hoping that I'm able to appeal to you on this. Let's do some steps. Let's start from the wrong way, the bottom end, the channel end. Step number one, I must not see my job as my source. I must not see my business as my source, my church as my source, my husband as my source, or my wife as my source, or whatever. Um, my wife is not my source, okay? Your, uh, your husband is not your source, your family is not your source, your whatever is not your source. I must see any blessing that comes as really a channel that God has brought along. I need to discipline myself to understand that God is my source. I have to seek his name first of all and above everything and his will first. Where does that go? What happens next? 
Just because God opens a channel does not mean that it automatically works for you. Most channels have to be worked. If God, let's, let's uh, do something um, like this. Okay, so um, I'm uh, uh, walking uh, on the street and there's a gentleman who's washing windows and um, doing quite all right. And we get talking, he says, I need somebody to work with me to wash windows with me. And I know this is just gonna work. I can just say, hey, great. This is God opening a channel for me. And I say, sign me up, right? And uh, I run home, get a change of clothes, go back and I'm washing windows. I'm gonna have to wash windows for that channel to work. I'm gonna have to be there on time for that channel to continue to function for me. I'm going to have to be faithful, be a good steward, of the channel that God has just opened. There is a stupid joke out there. I dislike the joke, not because it isn't wise or clever or smart, but because I've heard it too often. I know you've heard this. I'm not gonna tell the joke. When I describe it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's a flood. Some guy ends up on the roof of his house escaping floodwaters. He cries out to God to help him. Uh, someone comes by in a raft. Come hop on, on the raft. He says, no, no, God's going to look after me. A, a rescue boat comes by. Come hop in the boat. He says, no, no, God's going to look after me. Next thing you know, the floods are rising. A helicopter comes over the top. Uh, hop on the helicopter. You know, we'll pull you up. No, God's going to look after me. The guy dies. He said, Lord, what did you do? Why did you help me? And the Lord said, I sent you a raft and a boat and a helicopter. What more do you want? Well, okay. It's a silly joke. It kind of grates on you every time you hear it because you've heard it so many times. Nevertheless, it's about the source and channels. God, who is the source, opens channels that you're going to have to work in and take advantage of. Now, a little word of advice. If you have a channel for which you do not work, be careful because there are strings attached. Okay, so what do you mean? Well, I'm on a pension, I'm on this, I'm on that, or, or money's just coming in, I'm not working for it, I'm not doing anything, I'm not involved. This is just a word of friendly advice. I've been in ministry for 40 years, I've seen it all, okay? <laughs> if you have a channel for which you do not work, be careful. That thing could dry up, okay? The best channels are channels that engage your effort. Here's another thing. Channels don't remain open forever. God opens them and then he closes them. There are opportunities that exist, and then opportunities go away. They, they, they don't last. There are very few opportunities today to build sails for sailboats. Very few, because there aren't as many sailboats around. I mean, there's a specialized market, yes, but in the past, it was wind that traveled, um, that, that took the great ships everywhere. Okay, I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, when we first recorded our uh, messages, they were on cassettes. You can still buy cassettes and cassette recorders, but it's not how it's done anymore. Look at the tech that we have today, okay? Channels open, channels close. So you need to be aware of that. Do you think that God knows so little about the world that he does not open new channels when old ones close off? Now, if you have an opportunity or a time where one channel is getting a little bit leaner, like happened to me, what do you do at that time? Well, God is my source. I'm going to have some lean times. So what I did, so what I do, what I did was I learned some new skills. I met some new people. I worked hard. Those things are beginning to pay off by the grace of God. So there, that's how that all works. Okay. You need to be aware as well. The channels come and channels go. God does not change, but he opens channels. Well, how does that affect my daily life, my prayer life? Well, what do I do? Well, it really is a wonderful way to look at the world. Lord God, you pray, you give him your, you worship him, you, you uh, uh, submit your life to him on a daily basis, maybe at night as well as in the morning. And you, uh, uh, you say, Lord God, help me to be wise. Help me to be aware of the blessings that you bring my way. Help me to open those channels. Here's something else that God does. You may not specifically be able to work in a particular channel. Think about the, the uh, window washer. Maybe it's not a thing you're able to do for whatever reason, time, other commitment or whatever. But the moment I meet that guy who says, I need a window washer, I'm going to say, I want to be a blessing to somebody else and find someone else out there. Say, I'm going to, I'll see if I can find somebody for you. Right? I want to be part of that whole thing. Now, that also sharpens up your skill set, your abilities. The Ten Commandments are a great time and a great way to close this because in the, great in the Ten Commandments you see the sense of God's transcendence, that is his, 
being a source and God's imminence, God dealing with us on a day-to-day -day basis. And you, you, you can get this sort of picture that God wants us to work our channels and be responsible for our channels. And uh, I wasn't going to use this initially. I, I played around, but hey, look, I think it's the right way to close this. We don't preach on the Ten Commandments very often, but I think, um, I think we can see something here. Now, this is not the main reason God gave the Ten Commandments, but it's just a wonderful, interesting picture. Let me put them up here in light yellow. I've got the, um, the commandments that have to do with the sourceness of God, if you will, this transcendence, his, his living, his aboveness of everything, his otherness, all right? Have a look at these four commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So these, these four commandments really have to do with relating to God. And remember, there's a lot more behind these passages, uh, these statements, than just the statement here. So uh, three, for example, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who taketh his name in vain. I'm using the old King James here because that's how I remembered memory these passages. So you kind of see the, the um, God is source in, in these first four. God is transcendent. God is above everything in these first four commandments. Now look at God talking about caring for the channels that you have been given. It's fascinating when you see it this way. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. I'm using your here. Uh, you shall not covet interesting when you see this in terms of source and channels. And I hope you can get this little picture that I'm trying to share with you. You could kind of see that God, um, being above all as the source of everything, opens channels and, 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 and cares for and instructs his people how to care for them, how to look after them. You know, you could go a long way with this message, but I think I've gone far enough. I'm trying to keep my talks down to about 20 minutes on the interwebs. My conversation with my congregation will be a little bit broader. Of course, I know them all personally. I don't know you all personally. Let's very, very quickly review. God is the source of all things. He opens channels. Your job is a channel. God will open one, close another one, continue to do that. Your responsibility when God opens a channel is to work the channel, is to know the channel, work it. Realize that the channel is never the source. The moment the channel becomes the source, you're likely to lose it. God, in fact, may take it from you. We've seen that in scripture where, where the people start to become uh, dedicated to and think only about the land and only about the things that they have and they forget God and then they lose those things. It's important here to realize that no matter what channel God opens or what channel he closes, He's always the source, which is to say, you walk with him and talk with him first. That's true prosperity. That's true blessing. On a day-to-day -day level, God opened a channel for me, opened an opportunity for me. Why is it important now when it's always been important? But I can tell you, we are heading into really, really challenging times. We're not seeing the last days of creation or the last days of the world, those days are past us. That, those are prophecies about the, about the end of the old covenant. But we are almost certainly seeing the last days of the empire in which we've all lived. On the way down, it's not going to be pretty. And that's why we need to understand these things. God is the source. He opens channels. My name is Al Person. I hope this message blessed you. Send it to your friends. Send it to your enemies. I'm happy to talk more about this topic if you want. Let me know in the conversations because it's one of my favorites. And of course, as a pastor, I have to think about that in terms of the people who God has given me to care for. God bless you. We will talk again soon.